Hola, Mr. Cucanado. How's it going? Where are you taking me this time? I'm going to go up over Boulder Pass in Glacier National Park. We are permitted to stay at Upper Kintla Lake. It's about 12 miles from here. we got to go in today, but that's uh, relatively flat and hikes pretty fast. We'll go up to Boulder Pass, camp a night there, camp a night in Hole in the Wall. We're going to go camp at the very romantic uh, Lake Francis, uh, which is just a beautiful color of a lake with a waterfall in it. And then uh, we'll backtrack to Brown Pass and drop down to Bowman Lake, camp a night there, so five nights total. Hike out, and I've got a bike waiting on me. So if we don't hitch a ride, I can bike 15 miles back up to the Kentla Lake trailhead. So it's a little early in the season. Both the uh, Boulder Pass backcountry campsite and the Hole in the Wall backcountry campsite are still in winter conditions. Uh, so they have special regulations, and we have a permit form, which means unlike summer regulations, we're the only one in those two really sweet spots. So. Looking forward to it. Talked to a guy who got off the trail today. He said he saw a grizzly up there at uh, Boulder Pass where we're camping on night two. He just saw one uh, yesterday, so maybe we'll see some bears. Yeah. So Joey just gave you the lowdown and the rundown of our planned itinerary, and this is my first time backpacking in Glacier National Park, and also this will be my longest backpacking trip. And unlike our trip to Yellowstone, where there was a group of five of us, it's just the two of us this time. So it's a little bit more nerve-wracking in terms of, you know, um, grizzlies. But we, uh, I'm, I feel safe. I feel safe with my man here. And I know he's going to keep me protected. And it's going to be fun. I'm really excited. This is Kentla Lake. We're parked not too far from here. So this was a pretty short hike into this area. Beautiful. We were just warned about bear cub sighting ahead. Not too far. And a mama bear. So, a little sketched out. Joey's excited. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to catch up with him. I'll let you know what we find. What do you think so far, Joey? Wet and brushy. Something was eating. Check this out. Yeah. This was the killing grounds, I guess. No bones. Seeing a little views through the forest now. We're booked in because uh, we got a late start. We didn't start until 3.45. And uh, just trying to cover some ground. It does stay light here until about 10 o'clock almost. It's crazy. We crossed our first bones on this trail. First skeleton. First bear scat on the trail. And it's fresh. Beautiful view. Little patrol cabin. Check out this rainbow, you guys. Heard something. Well, we're almost to camp, not too far away, and Looks like whatever group's there right now has a fire going, which sounds amazing. So this is a um, shared or a group campsite, so there will be other people there. And I don't know how much I'll film, just because, you know, there's a bunch of people around. You don't know how people feel about that. So we'll probably uh, have some dinner, and then I'll check back in and say goodnight. But it's been a long day. <laughs> We're about uh, 12 miles today and uh, I don't have my trail legs yet. Um, last time I really did any kind of hiking was in Yellowstone and I'm a little tired. I'm not uh, ashamed to admit it. 
so we pretty much booked it today and that's why I didn't film too much but tomorrow's a short day it's, although we will be climbing about 3,000 feet so I think we could sleep in a little and kind of rest and recoup overnight which sounds amazing okay we have made it here to our backcountry campsite at Upper Kitla Lake and we actually have a pretty sweet spot you can see the lake out there uh, there's a bunch of people here but it seems to be a really nice crowd and they do have the fire going which is awesome because we're cold and wet but also because we brought in uh, bratwurst to cook over the fire tonight so that'll be uh, nice but Good morning. We have been in the tent all morning. It's probably noon. Uh, we've been hit with sporadic heavy rain and some pretty gnarly gusts of wind. So we've been trying to wait it out, but we are getting the feeling that uh, it's going to go on all day. So we're going to just try to have our breakfast and get going on this 2,800 foot elevation hike to our next campsite. We have a little ray of sunshine. I think we're just about ready to finally hit the trail. The weather is uh, not going to cooperate with us, I don't think, today, so we're just going to have to suck it up and go. Um, I did sleep well. I slept really well, actually. And it was nice and cozy in the tent. Um, here's a, a, the group that's here with us at camp. They actually, I believe, are up on the, doing the same hike that we are, but they're just going to head back and camp again tonight. And we will keep going. We have five nights. Right off the bat, we have all this blow down to contend with. We've already climbed over several logs. But there is a little sunshine. <laughs> so that is a plus. We've had about a dozen trees down so far. We're basically in here before trail crew has come in to uh, clear the trails and really can't appreciate the work they do in maintaining these trails until you come in here before they come in here and see how time consuming it is. And of course, everything's so brushy as well with all of this lovely rain. It is uh, going to make us get wet, yeah. You know, there looks like a big patch of blue sky out there. Maybe the atmosphere is going to settle down. We're going to have a great Great afternoon. Yes. I think positive. Beautiful as this. Gorgeous. There's actually a tree down across the uh, little suspension bridge here. What do you think of all the uh, climbing over trees so far? Uh, not my favorite thing in the world. No? Nah. Have you done this before? No. So I'm moving a little bit slower than Joey. Joey's used to this, but I am not. But, uh, it's pretty intense. Here, duck down for a second so you can see all the see? downfall. That's what we just walked through. Climbed through. It's not walking. I need to do more yoga. There we go. Upper Kentla Lake. We're making our way up, slowly but surely. Well, it just started pouring, so we're hunkering down in these trees. I'm trying to not get too wet. 
And of course I took off a layer when it was hot and now I'm cold again, so it's crazy. That's why you have to be very careful of hypothermia. It's easy to get. There's a pretty shot looking down on Upper Kentla Lake. It's actually uh, getting a little bit of sunshine which is perfect timing because we're starting to get really cold and we need to start hiking again. Last night we camped right down there on Lake Shore. I love these flowers. I haven't been wanting to see them and I'm finally seeing them. I think they're called bear grass. It's beautiful. Got to keep moving to get to camp though, before the next rain comes. Some of your bear grass. Catherine. What? You think the snow is starting to fall? It is snowing. Oh my god. Yeah, so much for a fifth rain squall. Fifth one's a snow squall. It's a mixture of rain, sleet, and snow. We thought we were hiding out from the rain again, but it turns out it's snow. We waited out the rain, back on the trail. Cannot tell you how stoked I will be when we get to camp. First bit of, a little bit of a snow field. As you can tell, I'm out of breath. <laughs> Just climbing, climbing, climbing. <sighs> See Kintla Lake down there? That is where we started. We are up here. Crossing these snow fields. It's been a tough hike. We did it! Made it to our campsite. Snow fields, down trees, rain, hail, snow. We're finally here. It's about probably the longest five miles I've ever done. Well, we have our tent set up. I have dry socks on and it feels amazing. Good morning day three. Not much has changed. It is snowing on us. It's done this all night. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning and it hasn't let up since uh, we went to bed last night. Well, it is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We're still here at our camp at the Boulder Pass campsite. Has not stopped raining and snowing until right now, and actually it's kind of lightly drizzling. Uh, but this is the first chance we've even had to get out of the tent to uh, go use the bathroom and eat any food. And actually this is the first break in precipitation uh, since we got in the tents at 10 o'clock last night. Uh, so. 
it's a long period and it doesn't look like anything's really about to change. This is actually the first time we've had visibility too. Every time I've stuck my head out of the tent all day today, I really haven't been able to see more than a couple hundred feet. We've just been socked in and it's just been a good mixture of big snowflakes, uh, sleet and snowballs, and of course rain. Um, and we're kind of in an interesting dilemma of not really sure what to do. Uh, we're supposed to head over to the Hole in the Wall backcountry campsite. Uh, and it's only four and a half miles from here and most of it is downhill. Um, now, under normal conditions, even in this rain and snow, if the trail was all melted out, we would easily do it. Probably we would have already started doing it in the rain and got there and set up camp. Um, the difference is right now there's still a lot of snow on the trail. We have a big snow field in between here in the pass. We have a huge snow field on the other side of the pass. And then we have a really sketchy steep snow field or multiple snow fields. Or basically we have a lot of unknown snow fields on the trail. A lot of route finding. I've done this in winter before. I'm pretty comfortable with it and I'm really comfortable to, on snow. Uh, but Cat is not used to hiking on snow, especially on steep snow fields. And because of the weather, all the snow fields are pretty solid iced over. So there's no kicking in steps. There's no kind of just mushing our way down the snow. Um, there's no post holing at all. It's really easy to slide. And so I haven't really been sure what to do because I don't know that I want to take someone across snow fields like that, especially when you can't even see. Like I said, we can see now, but you, the moisture's coming back in. You can kind of see. I mean, when you can't even see 100 feet in any direction, it's just kind of sketchy. Another issue is that the re rain has been freezing rain and we have really cold temperatures. And this is a great way to get hypothermia. Like walking in rain, like even being out here right now, I'm starting to get wet. And then walking in that uh, for four and a half miles and then not having the storms let up is, uh, it's not really a good thing to get ourselves into. And so we're trying to play our odds as to what's a smart decision. Should we just stay here in camp? And of course, we have a permit, and you have to stick to the permit here in Glacier National Park and move to your campsite every night that you're supposed to go to. However, in extreme weather conditions, uh, they're a little bit more lenient on that. And also, knowing that this is a winter campsite, I know that no one's going to come up here and take this spot. Uh, there might be one other group, because a winter permit only allows for one group in the campsite at night and this one actually has three spots so if someone else did have this camp spot and was silly enough to walk up in this weather to get up here today uh, it's not going to hurt them having us here because there's other places for them to set their tent up and uh, you know it's just one of those things where it might be better to stay dry than to risk walking in this uh, you know one thing that's really kind of throwing me a curveball in this whole planning is when we passed the uh, backcountry rangers yesterday, they really emphasized that bad weather was coming in tonight. Not right now, not today, not this morning, but tonight, and how they wouldn't camp up here at Boulder Pass because of the weather. And we are very exposed uh, to every element, the wind, the rain, the hail, and of course lightning. I don't like being up here, but uh, there are a bunch of other tall objects around us, so it's almost one of those things, do we play our odds, just stay dry and warm, and just hope that if a lightning storm does come in here, we don't get struck, hopefully, or do we want to move and risk getting really wet and cold before we even get to camp, and when we get to camp, you know, everything's already wet, are we going to be able to warm up, and it would be really hard to even try to start an emergency fire. Uh, with these conditions. So I'm rambling here, but bottom line is, I'm not really sure what to do. Uh, at this point, if this doesn't let up, I mean, it's already three o'clock, I think we're gonna just stay here and ride out any weather that's coming in, and I can see it behind us. Behind the camera, just coming right at us again. Um, it's probably the safest bet to do. Uh, you know, our, our campsite for tomorrow night's 
is uh, Lake Francis. It's only another four and a half miles. So we're only nine miles from our camp tomorrow. Uh, we, we can easily get there tomorrow, especially if we have better weather. And we're expecting better weather, but no, no none of this weather forecast has been anywhere close to accurate. So this is, we're getting to the end of day three already. And I mean, we've pretty much had rain the entire trip. This is crazy. Good morning. It is day four. It's July 4th. And we're just getting out of the tent after being in it for the last day. So we decided to stay and hunker down. It didn't rain all night and we're seeing patches of blue sky. So hoping for a good day today. I'll show you the view from this pit toilet. It's open air. It is an incredible view. Cannot tell you how good it is to see blue skies. Just hoping it holds out. Keep your fingers crossed for us, guys. Well, I can finally show you my face because I've got this rat nest kind of combed out a little bit. Felt good to sit here and have coffee this morning and feel a little bit more normal. <laughs> I didn't even have my coffee yesterday, so it, uh, it was really nice. Really just keeping our fingers crossed that the sun breaks through. Yesterday our options were just, you know, to possibly sit out a lightning storm. We actually moved our tent uh, down a little lower. We picked it up and moved it and um, we didn't experience any lightning, thank goodness, but we did hear some thunder. And so that was our option or hypothermia. Hypothermia was more probable if we would have actually set out to hike yesterday. So. We stayed in the tent all day, so a zero day, and um, I think we we're gonna have about nine miles to go today, but it's all pretty much downhill, so. We will have some sketchy areas to traverse. I know there's a snow field that we heard about that's pretty sketchy, so Joey's gonna help me over that, and I'm a little nervous about it, but I know that we'll get over it safe. That's it, we're just uh, trying to wait this out a little longer and see if it clears up a little bit and we can get on our way little friend that doesn't seem to mind. <laughs> this is my attempt at keeping my feet dry today. Ziploc baggies. Hopefully it works. Taking the high line over the snow fields to the top of the pass. And here's a view below us. Incredible. Joey the mountain goat. our last look back this way. We're pretty much to the pass. Just about to the top of Boulder Pass. Awesome! My morale is uh, being lifted.
these beautiful cascading waterfalls. Some blue sky. Yeah. Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. There are some peaks. So beautiful. It's where we came from. Amazing views. This is incredible. Hands down, this is the best view for a snack break. Tell us about your concoction for your snack. You want just peanut butter? Crunchy you peanut butter? M&M's. Peanut butter M&M's. <laughs> yeah, and tasty too. I'm so glad we made the decision to hunker down and stay. It's been so beautiful today. The snow travel has been a little sketchy in some areas, but not too bad. And Joey's uh, got my back and <laughs> looking out for me. And uh, we have about four more miles to go to our next campsite, which we were supposed to be at tonight. So uh, we're gonna get caught up. And so it's gonna be about nine miles of travel today. Trails looking absolutely gorgeous with these wildflowers. I'm having a great day. This is hands down my favorite day so far. Sort of our first wildlife on the trip, a mountain goat. He was pretty skittish of us. A little bit different terrain now. Check out this cascade. It goes all the way from there. All the way down.
in the center of the shot you can see Bowman Lake and that is where we're camping tomorrow night. But right now we're headed over Brown Pass, right over that saddle, around that wall, and that's where we camp tonight. Wind's right into us. Give me a good chance to walk up on a bear. You go first. This morning, we were in snow fields and now we're in warm weather and wildflowers. All right, we've made it to Brown Pass and are now headed down towards uh, Lake Francis. Only a few miles to go. I think those are maybe Thunderbird Falls. It's a better view of it, I'm sure, in a little bit. All right, so we've come into the valley after coming over Brown Pass, making our way towards camp. This is what the trail's looking like. And the mosquitoes are horrendous. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, we have made it to the spur trail down to our campsite, Lake Francis. We made it to our campsite at Lake Francis and we hung our food and we're just setting up our tent and there's a beautiful lake in front of us but I haven't seen it yet because we haven't been by there yet so we're just getting set up. It looks really beautiful. I can't wait to check it out. It looks like there's a waterfall coming down and I already met some nice people who are camped here as well. Uh, there's Joey back there. <laughs> Really beautiful hike today. Weather was awesome. I actually, I have to admit, I prayed for good weather after the last 24 hours. So I, I didn't. you didn't. I prayed for it to be awful for another day. You did I mean, not. Why not? <laughs> He's full of it. Don't listen to him. <laughs> so we got it. So I'm very thankful for that. And it was just a phenomenal day. I saw so much beauty. Blown away. Just blown away by this place. I don't know. Might rival the Sierras. I don't know. It's just absolutely stunning. Do you ever see that movie Home Alone? Yes. Uh, Home Alone 2. I don't know if I've seen Home Alone 2. Uh, there's a woman in there and she's like the pigeon lady because all the pigeons swarm above her head and you look like the fly lady right now because lady. all the mosquitoes are flying. <laughs> this, is, this is insane, the amount of mosquitoes. There's none over really by me. Oh, baloney. And this is what we can see from camp. What'd you think of today's hike? <clears throat> pretty intense to start out with because, well, first of all, I was already nervous just to, at the get-go because when we saw those two rangers and we told them that we were going to hike over the pass, the one ranger's eyes got huge and she just was like, are you, are you serious? Are you going to do that? And asking if we had all the proper gear and so I was nervous. And then, you know, I haven't done any kind of, snow, you know, snowfield cross, well, very little and very minor. So that was, to me... Some of it was pretty sketchy, so, but it was exciting. Like, that was, that part of the day was one of my favorite parts of the day, just because it was so new and exciting to me. So we went from like these winter conditions, and we dropped down kind of on the cliff, and then into more spring-like conditions, and then all of a sudden there's wildflowers everywhere, and that was awesome, beautiful. And then you have these huge, you know, glaciers 
to your right, and it was just, the view was phenomenal. Drop down a little further into the forest, and, uh, and then we landed at this beautiful, amazing lake. I love it. It was, right, it was an epic day. What was your favorite view? Wow. Probably, probably when we just came over the pass, and just seeing all those the glaciers in front of me. You know, I mean, that was, that's what I expect Glacier National Park to look like. So, that was kind of, I've seen some of it from you, but, um, that to me was Glacier. So, I'm glad, I'm glad we waited and went today when the weather was clear and we got to see all that. It was beautiful. Look at these bugs. I hate them. <laughs> They're sucking my blood. I don't, I'm not going to have any blood left. I need, like, an infusion. At least the weather is good though. Oh yeah. Finally. Yeah, it was, yesterday was not fun. I mean, the first three days were tough just because of the rain. You know, it's like lowers your morale, you know. And then we got, to, we made the right call yesterday. We made the absolute right call, staying where we were, and then today it was perfect. What did you think of today? Uh it was, uh, it was definitely easier than I was expecting in the way of it wasn't as much snow. Uh, I, I, we made the right choice last night not to come over, not to try to do it, because we would have missed the views and it would have slowed us up in the fog, but we definitely could have done it. Last night, when I was trying to decide what to do, I wasn't sure if, you know, we got to some, might get to some dangerous stuff in wet and foggy conditions, and we got to backtrack. But, uh, so yeah, I mean, it was, it wasn't any of that. It was really smooth and easy to get through the snow. I'm just glad that the weather did kind of clear so we had some views. Wish it had been a little better so you could have just seen all those dramatic views from the pass. Uh, plus it just looks so much prettier with blue skies. But it is what it is. So, yeah. really nice. And, uh... Yeah, it would have been it was it would have been nice to camp a hole in the wall too, but not not in those conditions. Just wish we would see some more wildlife. Not tonight. No, at this point we can turn the wildlife <laughs> scene button off. <laughs> we'll turn it back on at yeah. 10 a.m. Yeah, exactly. Right, the beautiful Lake Francis that I was telling you about. That's right out in front of camp. I wish I could get it all in the frame. On the menu tonight, cheese ravioli with Parmesan crisps and a bolognese sauce. It's awesome. Joey brought some dehydrated ground beef and it's really good. What do you think? <sighs> and here's our view. The spires are awesome. They remind me of the minarets and mammoth. I'm going to call it a night right here with this beautiful backdrop behind me. It was an epic, epic day. We started in winter conditions. I traversed, we traversed snow fields, uh, some sketchy ones, you know, that's something I'm not used to. And we dropped down kind of along the cliff uh, band and saw some beautiful wildflowers and then down back into the forest and now here at this beautiful alpine lake. We had an amazing dinner of ravioli and it's going to be time for bed pretty soon. I'm looking forward to our last, or actually tomorrow's not our last day. That's right. We have another day. It's July 4th, so happy July 4th. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. Good morning. It's day number five. Today we uh, have about a thousand feet elevation gain to get back up to Brown Pass and then we'll drop down Brown Pass uh, to Bowman Lake and that's about 
2,200 feet elevation loss. And that's our last camp for this trip. It's coming to an end slowly but surely. We're on the trail. It is a lot of uphill until we get to the pass. So I don't know that I'll film much because we just came coming back the same way that we came yesterday down the pass. So it's a lot warmer today. We have some cloud cover, so hopefully that'll help. I spared you the agony of going up a thousand feet of switchbacks in very hot, humid weather. All you would have heard is me huffing and puffing. But we made it over the pass and now into new territory. We, uh, like I said earlier, have about 2,200 feet of downhill today. And uh, clouds are kind of coming and going, but right now they're over us, of course, after we get over the pass. but. We're shining, the uh, sun was shining bright as we were traversing the switchbacks. It's very warm today, so we've had, we've run the gamut of weather on this trip. And I think that we're probably in for some thunderstorms today. It definitely feels like a thunderstormy kind of day. And uh, apparently we'll be going down in the trees now. up at Boulder Pass. We're right there. That's right where we came through yesterday. Right there. This is what we were looking at yesterday. Coming out from the pass. What the trail is looking like now. And our lake is coming into view. Right, we just had a little lunch break and we are continuing on our path downward. I think we, uh, we're gonna start getting out of the really majestic views pretty soon. This is some of the stuff we've been walking through. And on that first day, it was completely drenched. So needless to say, it got us drenched. Cut up all these down trees and cleared the trail. We had heard that there was a bunch of down trees here, but um, 
they came and cleaned it up, so thank you. Spot Mr. Toad camouflaging himself. Big guy. We have made it to camp here on night number five, our last camp of the trip. Sad to uh, see this trip kind of winding down. Uh, I didn't show you much of the hike once we got into the forest, and I think I showed you some of those high bushes. Those are uh, thimbleberry bushes, is what Joey said. So I think I might have nightmares about thimbleberry bushes <laughs> because trekking through those things, um, they over, you know, they overgrow the trail, and they're almost as high as me. So for me, it was difficult because I couldn't see my feet below, and I'm just a klutzy person. So uh, I found myself kind of tripping up a few times and. I fell on my bum one time sliding on a slippery rock, so <laughs> anyways, uh, I'm glad to be out of that for now. But uh, it was very hot and muggy and lots of mosquitoes, I mean tons of mosquitoes. And I don't, they're not too bad here right now, so not as bad as what we experienced earlier. But I'll tell you, I know, you know, once I get back home, I'll be wishing I was hiking through those thimbleberry bushes again uh, very shortly. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, even though it's not that pleasant in the hot, muggy conditions, going through all that thick vegetation, fending off mosquitoes, it's still an amazing experience to be out here. Look at this guy right here. Wants to get our food. Well guys, I think I'm going to call it a night right here. Uh, we are once again at a campsite with other folks. Um, I believe there are seven other campsites besides ours here. So we all share the same food prep area and the same fire. And out of respect for their privacy, I will not be filming uh, tonight. So thank you for joining me today. And we'll uh, check in with you guys bright and early tomorrow when uh, we wake up on our last day, day number six. Good morning, it's day six. We have camp packed up and we're ready to hike the seven miles out of here. But that just begins our travel because we need to get to the other trailhead. So, that's gonna be interesting. We made it to the foot of Bowman Lake. We are at the trailhead here. Well, it is time to end this trip. We made it back to, or I made it to the ranger station. Uh, we got a hitch from Bowman Lake, which is about six miles on the road. We would have had a road walk uh, to um, the juncture that hooks up with Kintna Trailhead and Joey had dropped a bike and stashed a bike there 
So from the hitch, she brought me here to the ranger station.